Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Martin of Tours as we celebrate the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Our Liturgy of the Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be God's kingdom, God's kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. to good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to ba Babylon, build houses and live in them, Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. The
from 2 Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may, be, may also obtain the salvation that is in Jesus, Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Oh, thank you, For he cannot deny himself. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Remind them of this and warn them that before God that they are to, be, to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Mm. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, mm. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? Mm -hmm. But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Last night I was tired, and so the sermon notes that were on my phone in a program called Notes, um, I didn't get up and transfer them to the computer. So this morning I was in my car and I went and I highlighted them so I could print them to the printer when I got in the building. Mm -hmm. And I met June Cottrell outside and talked to her and somewhere along there I must have hit the record the microphone button. <laughs> and so I have our conversation on my phone and no sermon notes. <laughs> now, that will either be a blessing to you because I will just do it short and quick, or because I'm an extrovert and talk a lot, it may be longer. <laughs> you are very kind. So, I chose to focus on the gospel today, the ten lepers who were healed and the one who returned. It's a story that basically I think we all know. Um, and so as I looked in the last few days and tried to figure out what I wanted to talk about, there were things that I obviously already knew, but I came up with two things that were really meaningful to me now, today. The first is based on the lepers themselves. Now, had I not gone to India mm. and mm -hmm. met lepers and spent time at the hostel that we built that is right outside of the leper colony, I would not know some things about lepers. I would have heard things, but I would not have digested them. I would not have known them. So the first thing is that in um, first century life, people who had leprosy obviously were not allowed to live in the city. That's very obvious in the scriptures. But they had to be close to the city. Due to their disease, they couldn't work. So there was no way for them to have income. So unless somebody, a relative or somebody lived in the city, 
there needed to be some generous people in the city that would bring out food, for example, so that the people with leprosy could actually eat. So in those days, I've always pictured or seen pictures and therefore kind of brought into myself the idea that there was a city and then right outside the city, probably living in caves, were the people who had leprosy and they would come out to the city to either ask for money, ask for alms, or to receive food. Today, 21st century, it's a little different. One difference is that, at least in the leper colony that I'm familiar with in India, it's not just the people with leprosy who have to live in that place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's their children, mm -hmm. it's their grandchildren, it's their great-grandchildren, it's their nieces and nephews. Anybody whose family had anything to do with leprosy is shunned. Now, they also, they don't live in caves. They, today, they have their own houses in a, uh, I was going to say fenced in, but walled in kind of community. It took probably us, but definitely me, a while to realize that the city of Perulia was way off, not in walking distance at all. So my, my guess was five miles, could, could have been more than that. Um, so the, the people who had leprosy in their family were way distant. Um, the thing I noticed and wanted to focus on today about the people with leprosy is that they're forced, in one way, to stay together. But they also need, and I believe want, to stay together. Not, okay, what I mean by that is they need community. You know, to have one leper sent off from a town would be... That's right. Yes, very isolating. And I can't imagine how one person could survive all on their own with this disease and trying to live, eat. So one key thing that we can learn from these lepers, there were 10 lepers, they were in that together. They could protect themselves with 10. They could encourage themselves with 10. They could be brave enough to ask for help, for alms, for food, and in the case of Jesus, for healing. Now, I expect they had heard about Jesus before this, that they'd heard about his healing, and they had heard that he was maybe coming their way. And my picture of this, at least, is that they were right there, and they... They had planned, and they did call out to Jesus with almost desperation, probably. I mean, this is, this is an amazing hope that you might not have to live this way. And they got his attention. And they did what he said. And they were healed. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, because their healing isn't just the disease. It's the being able to be back in a community of everybody. It's being socialized. It's being able to go to school. It's being able to have, you know, to meet people at the market. It's everything. I think like them, we need community. You know, we, there's no one here that I know of that has leprosy, but we all have something. You know, um, 
We have some people whose skin is darker. We have some people who have mental illness. We have some people who are obese. We have some people who are grieving. Some of those are visible. Some are visible sometimes. They're all painful. <laughs> I don't mean to say that our skin is dark is painful. I mean that we pay for that dark skin. We all need community. We all need strength. We all need compassion. We all need Jesus. We all need healing. The second thing, the second thing that I noticed, and I'm sure we notice this every time we read this story, but, but it's key right now. The second thing that I noticed that's so important to me is the gratitude. I did quite a bit of reading in the last couple days about the power of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I could probably find statistics, I could probably find the, the things for you, but you could also search on the web. There are a number of research studies yep. on the power of gratitude. Yep. Um, Thankful heart is a happy heart. Yes. And gratitude, the number one thing that gratitude brings is joy. And we've, we've talked about that before. But that's not a little thing. You know, we're living in a time that everything has changed and very little of it feels peaceful. Hmm. You know, being grateful doesn't mean that it changes the bad things. It doesn't take away our illness. It doesn't all of a sudden improve our relationships. But it changes something in us so that, um, so that the good is more likely to happen. Gratitude gives us peace because we're more satisfied with our lives. Gratitude makes envy way less probable. Gratitude, I believe, can bring us closer to God. When we're grateful, ultimately it's God, the source of all good, that has provided us with so many blessings. Gratitude, therefore, can increase our faith, our trust, or at least our yearning to know God more. This is a very familiar lesson. The new way that I thought about it this week was what if those 10 lepers are in me? What if I acknowledge that I have, we'll say 10, a myriad of things that unsettle me, that hurt, that make me feel fragile, vulnerable in ways I would not care to be vulnerable. And what if in the midst of those, I choose gratitude? Some people recommend a gratitude journal. That can be very helpful to some people. I'm not a journaling person. I've started, but I don't keep it up. I'm just not a journaling person. But I can purpose 
to say thank you to at least one person every day. I can purpose to offer prayers of gratitude all through the day. My prayers have changed to almost all gratitude, not entirely, of course, but almost all gratitude. What if even one of those 10 lepers within me turns around and bows before God and says, thank you. That's the sum of my thoughts. I did have some quotes. <laughs> I offer them to you with gratitude for you. Amen. invite you to stand and join in saying the Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are Form 3, found on page 387 of your prayer book. <laughs> As we pray for those on the prayer list, you are invited to join in these prayers. Your prayer list can be found in the back of your bulletin. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, 
or pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. Remembering those on the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all deacons in the diocese and St. Martin of Tours, Kalamazoo. In St. Martin's cycle of prayer, we pray for Lisette, Roseanne, Jean, Jeannie, Pam, and Madeline. Loving God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. We pray for Julianne and for all others discerning vocations to ordained or lay ministry, for our vestry and offices, and for all those seeking a deeper knowledge of God. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Prince, our bishop provisional, for Bonnie, for Rayford, for Moses, the bishops of our companion diocese, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and for Craig, the bishop of this area, synod of the ELCA. We pray for the diocese and canons ministers, Alan, Vale, and Anne, and for the clergy associated with this parish, Mary, Pat, Rick, and Mike. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, and correction, our governor. For our Congress and our courts, that together with all people, we may rise above partisanship and strive to serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for loaves and fishes as it feeds the hungry and food insecure in our community. We pray for our prayer shawl ministry which reaches far beyond the walls of our church and for hospital hospitality house serving families whose loved ones are in critical care in local hospitals give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight we pray for all who are aging who find their bodies having more and more limitations. Give them peace and patience to accept their bodies' natural changes and give them joy and laughter with their loved ones and caregivers. We pray for those on our prayer list. Allison, Allison Daniel, Deb, Delia, Jenny, Joel, Julie, Margaret, Shannon, Caleb, Marv, Sandy, Jim, Frank, Carter, Angela, Alan, Jenna, Mike, Christopher, Karen, Sean, Jean, Louis, Tony, Don, Carol Ann, Christopher, Carrie, Ken, Mary, Mary Beth, Beth, Robert, Robert Jeannie, Jean, Pat, Deb, Becky, Kate, Deb, Dean, Nancy, and Christine. For those recently diagnosed with breast cancer who have asked for our prayers, Christine, Christine Sandra, Pamela, Pamela Mary, Sabrina, Sabrina Dana, Deborah, Catherine, Erica, Kathleen, Michelle, Leonora, Melissa, Vicki, Dorsey, Sharon, Catherine, Kathy, Deborah, Jonah, James, Betty, Linda, Lottie, Erica, and Nikki. And for those whom we now name.
We pray for the continuing needs of those whose lives and homes were in the path of Hurricane Ian and those in Central America in the path of Hurricane Julian. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Marty and Jean. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we may also, also have to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what you have left behind us. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen.
We will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 1. There should be an insert in your bulletin. If you're able, please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is joyful to give you thanks all holy God source of life and fountain of mercy you have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love you have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. stewards and show forth your bountiful grace but we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves we would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love yet you never ceased to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Martin of Tours and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
the blood of Christ help us salvation. The blood of Christ keep you in everlasting life.
you're able, please stand for the post-communion prayer, the words of which can be found on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated unless you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary and would like to come forward for prayer and a blessing. Is it your birthday? It is. May I? It was on Thursday. It was on Thursday. May I put my hand on your head? Please join with me in the prayer that's in the back of the prayer book. And we'll pray for Chris's birthday. Do you prefer Chris or Christine? Chris is fine. Okay. Let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris, I bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You now have the opportunity, not the mandate, to tell us the best thing about the past year, or something good, and your hope for the coming year. I'm extremely grateful for my health and the recovery of Ken's health. Mm -hmm. His um, mending from his accident. Mm. I'm grateful for my family and friends mm. and St. Martin's. And I especially wanted to acknowledge St. Martin's Ministries today. Mm. I give thanks for Amen. all that we do for people in our own church, in our community, nationally, and in the world. Mm. And I love Mary's reference to India and the lepers and having had the privilege to go on a number of trips to India. It was um, mm. a gift to spend time with those people who have been afflicted by leprosy or their family members and see such, just, such great joy in their lives mm. and such gratitude. Mm. Reminds me to be grateful that everything for everything mm. that I have. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Let us stand and praise God for Chris. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
while Deb is coming up, I'll remind you that we're having a leadership team meeting this Thursday afternoon. Everybody is welcome, particularly the leadership of the parish is, will meet to talk about ideas for the future. I think it's three o'clock on Thursday. Well, but, sorry. I just wanted to make one more announcement that the, the Kalamazoo Back Festival's um, uh, cabaret is going to be celebrated and enjoyed um, um, on Friday night at Bell's and the tickets are $20 for um, the whole evening of festivities and food and then um, $10 after, I believe it's after 9 o'clock, which I think is when the drag show is. Um, I've never been to a drag show, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I cannot believe we're announcing a drag show. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> right. So I would like to invite anybody to, to come, and um, we're we're really trying to live into diversity, equity, and inclusion hmm. in our organization. <laughs> um, in, the, in the spring, we will be announcing our new name, which will not be a. Um, a classical musician's name, but we're wow. Doing it. So, thank you. Bells at what time? Bells, I believe it starts at seven. I think the, I'm sorry, I should know this. I thought I had the right poster. <laughs> I'll set some out. Thank you, Bill. I don't see Jennifer, but just wanted to announce that the uh, warm clothing uh, drive is going on, and uh, I believe we're collecting next week. And there's two boxes in the back by the coat room and also some signs on the uh, coat rack. Uh, whatever you want to uh, donate, would be appreciated. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm grateful for our message this morning. Uh, thankful heart is a happy heart. I'm really grateful for this place. Um, my announcement is that uh, this week we begin uh, the first week of two weeks of uh, anti-racism training. This, these, this team that we're training um, is particularly difficult because uh, it's not from a particular location. So all the teams are from like Jackson County or Kent County. So everybody related to the team lives in the same community or works in the same area. This team that we're training is the Michigan Child Support Team. And, and that means that there's people from all over the state on this team, and they operate from different positions in the system. So we have prosecuting attorneys, we have defense attorneys, we have the people who work in the child support system in DHHS. We have some uh, recipients of child support and some folks who were mandated to provide child support. And when you get all of those folks together, from their different positions. Um, this is the hardest team I get to train. And so I will cover your prayers. Um, we will be meeting, uh, it's the four day environmental scan, which is also the hardest part of the training. Um, that means they're making an assessment of the system throughout the statewide. And uh, it's, it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then next week it'll be four days again. So if you remember, uh, please, please pray for a race. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes, Pat just reminded me to announce that uh, Canon Alan James will be with us next Sunday. This is an official visit from the uh, Canon Missioner from the southern part of the diocese. So um, please come and please help him feel welcome. Before I offer the blessing, uh, please join me in prayer for the work of the race that Joanne just talked about. Let us pray. You know the difficulty of this task, O oh God, and you know the necessity. Give Joanne and the people she works with whatever skills they need to help the attendees hear 
and to help them buy into, <laughs> to help them intend to have great purpose to positively affect their organizations mm -hmm. toward good relationships among all races and all peoples. Mm -hmm. We praise you in advance mm -hmm. for your work. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please stand for the blessing. Yes. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. After church today, there will be training, acolyte training for torchbearers and crucifers. We really need torchbearers and crucifers. So this isn't just, for, we're not just asking for youth, we're asking for anybody who might be willing to be a torchbearer or a crucifer to let us know, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace and give you joy. The Lord's blessing be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.